What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jake Reed, and today I want to talk to you guys about how to hit more home runs in franchise mode in MLB The Show 19. Now, I wanted to sh go through, this is going to be a relatively quick video, um, and there's two aspects to how to hit more home runs in MLB The Show 19. Um, one of them can be achieved through franchise mode or through um, uh, Diamond Dynasty by focusing on which players your uh, using and which stats you're focusing on. Um, and then the second aspect is going to be actually how you target the ball uh, when it's coming at you whenever the pitcher throws the ball. So I want to kind of show you guys what my benchmarks are for, for developing a team that will hit more home runs. Now, if you guys have watched my series at all here on the channel with uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates, you know that kind of my benchmark for home runs and home run power is Starling Marte. Now, Starling Marte, what I say about him is that he has kind of sneaky power. And what I mean by that is he's not a guy that's built to be a power hitter. As you can see, he's a fast guy, he's a really good fielder, and he has really good contact on both sides. So generally speaking, you're not looking for him to be the power guy in your lineup, but he hits really well, and you will get a significant amount of home runs with him. As you can see in this franchise, we're 11-0, and then if I go to my stats, whenever I find him here you'll be able to see that Starling Marte actually does have quite a few home runs already on the season. He's got two through 11 games, which is pretty good, and that's comparable to other guys that have power, like, you know, Vlad Jr. and Josh Bell that have five and four, respectively, and then other guys. You'll see I have a lot of home run production across the entire lineup here from guys like Austin Meadows, Malik Smith, Tim Anderson, and Cole Tucker, as well as, you know, Seiji Ubiashi, all these guys, AJ Reed. So, so you can see that I get power from a lot of different positions, and that's kind of the first thing that I want to talk to you about in terms of, you know, developing power um, at that position. Now, give me one second. I need to respond to a text and tell this guy to stop inviting me real quick. Um, and then I'll be back. Okay, apologize for that. Um, so, so I want to give you guys the benchmark then as to how you can hit power, and then all these guys that you'll see, um, you'll see kind of a commonality between where their power stats are. And so, obviously, I set the benchmark at Starling Marte. Starling Marte has 58 power on the right side and 51 power on the left side. And, and what you'll see is that he'll hit home runs both ways, but primarily he'll hit home runs on the right side. So that kind of 58 power is what you want in terms of a player that you're not necessarily developing to be a power hitter, but somebody that you want to be consistently able to hit home runs, you know, from time to time. Now, if you want somebody that is generally a power hitter and is going to hit home runs more often than not, you're going to want somewhere above 70 on both sides or on whichever side you're trying to hit home runs on. And so AJ Reed is a good benchmark for that. So he's got 75 power versus right and 72 power versus left and generally I like to have one guy on my bench that has 70 plus power on both sides that I can hit home runs with and that's what AJ Reed is for me now obviously a guy like Josh Bell who has 96 and 92 is going to be able to hit home runs far more often than what you'll see is that he leads my team in home runs but that's kind of the idea of how the progression of power works when you start getting into the 80s and 90s, you're going to hit home runs more often than not. If you're going to get into the 70s, you're going to have somebody that's consistently hitting for power uh, as opposed to something else. But the kind of the base level for power that you want out of a player is around that 50-55 range. Uh, and, and you'll see Tim Anderson is very much like Starling Marte in that he has 52 and 58. So if we go to Starling Marte, he had 51 and 58. Uh, so very similar, both of them have two home runs on the season, and then Cole Tucker has 54 and 55, and he had two or three home runs on the season. And then you'll see a difference, Vlad Jr., he was second on my team in home runs, he has 78 and 78. So you can kind of see the benchmarks there where things stack up. If you want somebody that's going to have enough power to hit home runs from time to time, you want them to have above 50 power on those sides. And then if you want somebody that is going to be consistently a home run hitter, you want a above 75 because that's going to get you into the ballpark of where you're hitting home runs pretty often and then if you want somebody that is always hitting home runs like josh bell for me you're looking for the 90s upper you know upper 80s 
in order to generate that power. Um, and you'll see that most of my team is constructed in order to have the amount of power that I'm looking for. So uh, it, we can go by position and look, Jorge Alfaro is my righty catcher. He's the one that goes against right-handed pitchers and he has 72 power in that respect. And if he ever has to play against lefties, he has 57. And then likewise, Elias Diaz plays against lefties. He has 57 power in that regard. Uh, and so you know that you'll be able to hit home runs occasionally with both of these guys if need be. And then you look at my first baseman. They both have 70, uh, but the, you know, AJ Reed above 70 in both categories, Bell above 90 in both categories, and then Tim Anderson, who I can expect to get home runs, has 52 and 58. But then you look at a guy like Adam Frazier, who I don't hit very many home runs with at all. He only has 53 on one side side and then 43 on the other so he he kind of drops down there a little bit into the next tier where you're not going to hit uh, home runs very often at all and then you look at third base uh, I hit home runs consistently with Vlad Jr. and then every once in a while I'll get a nice home run with Colin Moran and that's because he has that 55 and 57 power on both sides and then at shortstop likewise Cole Tucker 54 and 55 Starling Marte has 51 and 58, Seiji Ubiashi has 65 and 66, and I can uh, trust him to get home runs slightly more often than you can Starling Marte. As you can see, he's got three home runs and he has far less at-bats. So when you start to approach that 60, you're starting to approach more consistent home run power. And then 50 is, is like just good enough to get home runs, uh, you know, consistently. And then in the 40s, you'll get home runs every once in a while. But anything below that, you can't trust to get home runs generally. And that's kind of where it is with Malik Smith. He's only got 43 and 42 on both sides. So I'm not going to trust him to be a home run hitter. And it's going to be a surprise any time that he hits a home run because he He's below that 50 threshold that I said, and so he's going to really have to get a hold of a ball in order to hit a home run with that type of power. And then Austin Meadows, likewise, is a pretty consistent home run hitter with three home runs so far through 11 games. He's got 78 power and 74 power, um, and that gives you guys a pretty good idea of what you need power-wise constructing your team in order to actually be able to uh, kind of hit more home runs. And now that we've looked at it from a team building aspect, let me go ahead and go into a practice mode and show you you guys what I do hitting wise to hit more home runs because this is really important and I don't think a lot of people do necessarily you know what I do a lot of people will leave their uh, zone right in the middle of the zone and I don't think that's what you want to do let me see I want to do custom practice uh, home as Pittsburgh Pirates that's fine blah 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 doesn't matter to me enter practice mode and I think it gives me the option to choose batting practice and I want to show you guys kind of what I do in order to generate the power that I do and generate home runs. Um, what, a, what it has to do primarily with is hitting specific types of pitches. And I think a lot of people are trying to swing at just about anything. Um, what do I want to do? Game controls, options. No, not game controls, options. Gameplay. Nope. Free to play. I want to be batting, and that's fine. And so generally what I do in terms of batting is I look at the pitch types and see what the other, what the guy I'm going against has. And so I'm going against a guy that has two fastballs in the four seam and the two seam. So I know that the majority of the pitches he's going to throw me are going to be fastballs. So that's what I'm going to target because I'm a good fastball hitter. You have to find out what you're good at hitting. But generally speaking, it's going to be hard to hit a curveball because they just have so much break on them. You're not going to be able to hit them for power unless they're left up in the zone uh, right there served on a platter for you. And that's not going to happen very often. You're going to struggle to hit a slider for a home run because it's got so much lateral movement from left to right or right to left you're not going to be able to get the power on it that you need to and then the cutter is sim it's like halfway between a fastball and a slider in my opinion in that it, it has a little bit of break to it but it's you know generally considered a type of fastball it's a cut fastball so um, I'm going to be looking for a fastball in my in my zone in order to hit and what I do to start off an out bat is I go up in the zone I raise my zone up in the zone and then I swing at things that are up in the zone because you're more likely to get the air under it that you need to hit that for a home run and so that's going to happen for the majority of the at bat until i get into a count where 
you know, I'm in a position where I just need to get on base or I need to get a hit or whatever, then I'm going to move back into the middle of the zone and wait for something. But generally speaking, I want to go up into the zone and be ready for a pitch that's up here because this is what I want to hit. That's how you're going to generate um, a home run is by being up here and hitting the ball up and in the zone. Uh, and you have to determine when you want to do this because you're not going to want to do this all the time. You're not always going to be wanna, wanting to go for power, you know, especially if you have like... Um, you know, nobody on or nobody on base. You're the leadoff guy. Maybe you just want to get a guy on base. That's going to be a different uh, animal altogether. But I find it easiest for you to sit up in the zone and be ready for those pitches that are going to be home run pitches um, than it is to stay here and then move up to them. So I like to sit up in the zone here, wait for something to come to me, and if it doesn't, I adjust and hit like that. As you can see, I start up in the zone and adjust down to the ball if I need to. Um, but the reason I hit so many home runs is I'm up here and I'm ready for pitches that are up and in the zone uh, to hit them out of the park. I'm always up here and I'm ready to go for a pitch that is going to be a home run type of pitch. You're going to have a lot more trouble hitting a home run off of a pitch that's down further in the zone. Trust me, guys. It's just the way that it works. And this is how I get so many home runs. I get a lot of people asking me all the time, how do I hit so many runs in my franchises and stuff like this? It, it's not that I'm a good player. It's just the, sh the strategy at bat is a lot better than what other people do. A lot of people will just sit here in the middle of the zone and wait for something to come to them, or they'll adjust to it off of here, and you're more or less likely, or sorry, you're more likely to just get soft contact on a ball like that because you're not preparing for anything specific. You're adjusting late to whatever comes to you. Instead, what I say is I want to hit a ball up here, and if I choose to, I'll adjust to it and hit something somewhere else. And as you can see, I'm getting good power on these balls, uh, and I'm sending guys to extra bases. That's really important to know. Um, as you can see right there, I've already gotten a couple hits way out in the zone. And I can't emphasize that enough. If you sit in the middle, you're going to be adjusting late in any direction. Instead of taking control and doing what you want to do, if you specifically want to hit balls deep and you want to hit balls into the outfield, take control and say, I'm going to swing at anything in this zone like that, and I'm going to drive it. And if I need to, if I get into a count where I need to switch it up, then I'll move down and adjust to the ball. Or if it's a pitch that I really like and I think I can hit it, I'll adjust to it. This is how you get so much power on the ball. Uh, and I really wanted to emphasize that for you guys because I think it's really important and I think a lot of people miss out on this. And when I swing with guys that have power like this, I am oftentimes, for the first couple pitches, I'm swinging for power. So I'm using that square button to swing for power because I want to hit the ball out of the park. And so for the first couple pitches, I'm okay swinging and missing if I get a swing and a miss. Uh, but generally, I'm going to swing for power like that. That was a power swing. And then whenever it comes to a count that's full or something like that, I just need to get a base hit, and I don't necessarily want to hit for power or anything like that. I'm going to adjust and swing for X. Um, but like I said, the most important thing, build your team so that you know what power numbers you need in order to actually generate home runs. That's really important. And then I think that's one of the biggest things that people overlook is just that some people, some players aren't able to hit home runs, and you need certain power numbers in order to actually be able to hit home runs. And then other than that is how you approach the plate. You know, if you aren't, you know, getting enough home runs, then try sitting up into the zone like I am. Or try, maybe you're really good at hitting curveballs and off-speed pitches. Try sitting down low and try to rock at those for a home run. As you can see, if you're sitting on it and there for it, you don't have to adjust much, and you're going to get much better solid contact on it and generate more power. So that's really important. It's all about plate strategy and a little bit about how you construct your team, um, and you're going to generate much harder uh, switch. And what you'll see, you know, go watch some of my franchise mode gameplay. You're going to see I don't get a lot of soft contact. I get a lot of hard contact when I do. Uh, and the reason being is that I swing on pitches that I want to swing on. Um, and I'm pretty good with the timing of it. So, so generally speaking, I put the ball in play. I don't foul it off a whole lot. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'd rather put the ball in play. Um with hard contact because that means that eventually I'm going to have something break my way and I'm going to be able to score some runs. So, uh, that's my, those are my tips. Um,
you know, make sure you build your team correctly and make sure you focus on how you're attacking at the plate. Um, it's going to change things dramatically for you. If you start to do this and get used to it, you're going to see a lot more harder hit balls. And if you have the power uh, players on your team, you're going to see a lot more home runs. So make sure you keep that stuff in mind. I hope this video helped you guys out. I hope that this, uh, this gave you guys at least some ideas of what you want to do in order to generate some more power, or at least gave you some insight into how I hit so many home runs as a team. Uh, I know I get a lot of questions that, about it all the time. So I just figured it was a good time, you know, to, to get this video out to you guys and give you guys an idea of what I do in order to hit so many home runs. So like I said, hopefully it helped you guys out. If you did enjoy the video, if you liked it, if this helped you out in any way, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more and comment down below with any feedback you have. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you guys have a great one. And what a pitch to end it off or a hit to end it off on. That looks like a home run. Yep, nice home run there with Corey Dickerson because I sat up in the zone and I was ready for the four-seam fastball to come right at me. Um, so hopefully it helped you guys out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.